Yo, what up, everyone? It's your boy, Mr. Bad Gamer, whatever my name is. Honestly, I don't quite remember myself. Anyway, welcome back to Nightmares of Nature, where I'm joined... Today, I'm joined by two very special guest stars from the Discontinued Cranium channel. Please welcome Pat and Emerald. Hello, everyone. I'm Emerald, and this is my brother, Pat, who will not be in the video because I don't want him to ruin it like he ruins everything. He once scanned me out of a $5 bill, and I have not gotten over that. So, Pat, please leave, if you will. Uh, thank you, and very much. Uh, thank you very much. That's what you get for upstaging me at the lemon stand, brother. Well, that's that, I guess. Today in Nightmares of Nature, we're discussing everyone's favorite flying mammals. That's right, we got the bats. Not to be confused with baseball bats, of course. <laughs> You sure you can talk about bats? Yeah, of course I know how to talk about bats. I've played enough Arkham Asylum to know everything about bats. Just watch me, bunny. I'm a chinchilla squirrel hybrid. Whatever. Let's get into this. Bats are notably the only non-bird vertebrae to be capable of true flight, as every other non-bird vertebrae that's still alive is only capable of gliding and not true flight. The reason for why bats develop the ability to fly is still kind of a mystery among scientists, but what likely happened is that something needed to fill the role of nighttime bug eater, and since the birds slept for the night, the nocturnal mammal stepped up to the role and slowly evolved the ability to fly. My personal theory is that bats started out as gliding mammals, but then evolved true flight as a way to fully get into the bird-like niche that they filled. And also, no. Bats are not rodents. Not every small mammal is a rodent. Bats are found all over the world, and thanks to their ability to fly, bats are often the only terrestrial placental mammals to be native to several islands, such as Australia, for example. Bats are mainly divided into two main groups, mega and micro. Let's start with the mega bats, aka fruit bats. As the name suggests, mega bats contain some of the biggest bats, including flying foxes, in which some species have a six-foot wingspan. As the name fruit bat suggests, mega bats are fruitivores, flying around the forest and eating fruit, with some species even being nectar drinkers. Most fruit bats are also incapable of echolocation, and rather than roosting in caves, they tend to roost in trees. And some species are actually diurnal, meaning they're active at day, unlike the stereotypical bat which is active at night only. Like several birds, fruit bats' droppings often contain seeds, allowing new plants to grow where the bat does its business. Gross. Now we got the microbats. These are usually what people think of when they think of bats. Most microbats are insectivores, but some are more specialized, such as bulldog bats, which are fish eaters. These bats are mostly nocturnal, spending the day either in caves or in really high, secluded, shaded areas in large groups. Bats are famous for their echolocation, which means that they send out a sound which allows them to see what's ahead, although despite what the common saying says, bats are not blind. Of all the microbats, and bats in general, probably the most famous is the vampire bat. As its name would suggest, the vampire bat only has one thing in its diet. Blood. At night, the vampire bat will search around for sleeping animals, and when it finds them, it'll crawl onto them, and using its very sharp teeth will create an open wound that it can lap up blood from. And the sleeping prey doesn't even notice, both through a combination of how sharp the bat's teeth are, and because of the fact that its saliva acts kind of like both a numbing agent as well as, a, as well as an anti-blood congealant, allowing the blood to keep flowing at well after it should have stopped. <laughs> Also, they're some of the only bats capable of moving on the ground. Most others are absolutely terrible at it. Now, as you can imagine, blood isn't the most nutritious diet, and a vampire bat has to eat once a day or else it'll starve to death pretty much instantly. Wow, I'm impressed. You knew a lot more about bats than I thought you would. Oh, I get it. You think I'm stupid, huh? Huh? But you know what? I think I'll tell your parents about you. Oh, you'll tell my parents? That's great. I actually haven't seen Mommy or Daddy since they went for that drive and never came back. Grandma says they went to live on a farm, but they haven't come back in, like, five years now. You know? Same! <laughs> I mean, my parents also went for a drive and never came back. Apparently, Mr. Chippier invited them on a fishing trip, and then they never came back. Had to take my had to take my little brother cringe kid to live with my grandpa. Uh, to, after a while, grandpa lost it, and then eventually, it was like that we weren't the ones living with him. He was the one who had to live with us. It was hard on us, but eventually, we met Mr. G, and uh, yeah, that's that's that. I would like to complain about fear mongering here, but unfortunately for me, they don't get really anything factually wrong, really, so I can't. So the vampire back at the ten out of ten. Likewise, the ghost bat's also fine. The spectral vampire, the pipistrill, the mouse-eared, the greater horseshoe, the hammerhead, and the Indian flying fox. 
they're all fine, except for maybe a lot of them are pretty fear-mongery. But hey, that's what you get with the series, I guess. I mean, after all, it's nightmares of nature and tiny terrors and... Okay, maybe not strange wonders, they don't really fear-monger that much. But hey, that's what you get, I guess. As for human-bat relations, bats are usually seen as one of those typical scary animals, but not in the same way as something like a lion or a shark. They're not scary because people are afraid of getting mauled to death by them. They're scary in a Halloween sense of the word. They're used in a lot of horror movies of set dressing in order, to Im in order to indicate something to spooky. You know, stuff like that. It's not like sharks where they're the main antagonist or anything like that. Uh, in addition, uh, in media, bats tend to be portrayed in a pretty negative light. In video games, for example, bats tend to be some of the most hated enemies. I mean, just look up a list of hated enemies and look up how many of them are either bats or inspired by bats. Like those impossible to beat zoo bats in Pokemon that I can never get past. <sighs> Whatever. Anyway, bats are also associated with the mythical creatures of vampires. I'm not entirely sure why, since the vampire bat lives in South America, but the vampire itself is a European creation. Oh well, riddle for the ages. Oh, but speaking of bats and myths, there's a really weird myth that says bats like to get tangled in hair. This is a complete lie, and it was pretty much created as a way in order to uh, keep people with long hair from going out at night. So, there's that. Oh, but bats do have some sort of danger to humans, as uh, bats carry plenty of diseases from the one that uh, I've been told not to name since it'll send a certain someone into a freakout. Uh, there's Ebola and the demonetization virus. But hey, it's not all doom and gloom. Plenty of people like bats, and in fact, bats are pretty common in zoos. And hey, fruit bats help the environment by spreading trees around, as I said earlier. So that's always a plus for me. So yeah, that's all for this episode of Nightmares of Nature. And hey, I wonder what happened to Pat. What the what? I told you Pat can't be trusted.